So this is our last lecture video for lecture 30, or 43 in our series here, but it's also our first, our first video based upon section 11.9 on James Stewart's calculus textbook, for which we'll talk some more about what it means to represent a function as a power series in lecture 44 in our series, so stay tuned for the next video there. What I want to do at just the end of lecture 43 is give you some motivation on why we care about power series. After all, I said that a power series is going to try to connect the theory of series we've been developing over the last several lectures with the theory of continuous and differentiable functions we've learned about before. And the reason is the following. Well, a series itself is an infinite discrete sum, so it's like, it's like a series, but it also has a continuous variable, x, so it's like a continuous function. It's this marriage between the discrete and the continuous, and as it is, uh, as it is a continuous and potentially even differentiable function, we could ask ourselves, can we take the derivative of a power series? Can we take the integral of a power series? And the answer here is going to be yes. If we have a power series, let's say it's a series, we take the sum of cn times x minus a to the n, it's a power series with coefficient series cn and center a, and let's suppose we know the, the radius of convergence is, is a positive number. It could be finite, it could be infinite, but we, it's not the case where the radius of convergence equals zero. Now, in that situation, a power series is in fact differentiable, and since it's differentiable, it actually means it's continuous, It'll be differentiable on its interval of convergence a minus r to a plus r. Now, it could be that the interval of convergence actually might have some brackets here, uh, like something like this. We cannot guarantee, we can't uh, guarantee differentiability at this endpoint. But on the open interval a minus r to a plus r, we can always guarantee differentiability. In which case, the derivative of the function, if you take the derivative of f, so our function f was defined as a power series, the derivative of the function will look like the sum where n equals one, n equals one to infinity of the sequence n times cn minus x, or times x minus a to the n minus one. Turns out that formula might seem kind of, oh, where did it come from? But if you actually look at it step by step by step, this power series in a more expanded form looks like c0 plus c1 times x minus a plus c2 times x minus a squared, et cetera. When we take the derivative of this thing, the derivative of a constant, it's goner, it's dead, it's gone here. Um, the derivative of c1 times x minus a, the x minus a will disappear, so we get c1. Um, that's actually why the derivative starts at one. The constant term, which is n equals zero, will disappear when you take the derivative. Then the next term, you're gonna get two times c2 times x minus a. Uh, then the next term would look like three c3 times x minus a, squared and this pattern would continue onward right and so when you look at kind of ignore kind of ignore the cn for a moment when you look at just this term right here n n times x minus a to the n minus a that that's just the power rule right you know if you're being confused by the x equals a there just consider just consider the derivative of cn times x to the n right well, this is just gonna look like, if we take the derivative of this thing, you're gonna get cn, because it doesn't depend on x at all, n times x to the n minus one. And so the idea here is that a power series is essentially just an infinite polynomial. And how do we take the derivative of polynomials? We go term by term, term by term, term by term, and we apply the power rule term by term by term. That's how we get the derivative of a, of a polynomial. And so, Turns out that's how it's going to work for power series as well. Now there is a there is sort of issues of convergence going on here, like how to why are we justified in uh, using linearity at the infinite stage? Um, well, we can get into some talks about like uniform convergence and things like that, but uh, I, that, that kind of takes us beyond the scope of calculus two here. We can take the derivative of a power series term by term by term, just like we do polynomials, and that also applies for antiderivatives as well. If we were to take the antiderivative of this function right here, well, there's gonna be some constant terms, so we're gonna write that first, c plus, and then the constant, the original constant term c zero becomes c zero times x minus a. Then the next one would look like c one times x minus a squared over two. The next one would look like c two times x minus a cubed over three. You just basically just raise the power by one, and that's exactly what this formula is doing right here. You have your plus C, your constant, 
and then you're going from zero to infinity, you're gonna get your coefficient sequence divided by n plus one, and then x minus a will be raised to the n plus one power as well. So you just apply the antiderivative power rule term by term over the entire infinite series, and that's how we take the antiderivative of a power series. So let's look at an example of such a thing. So notice we have this function f of x equals the series, it's defined as a power series, n equals zero to infinity, we take the sum of negative two x to the nth power over three to the n. And so we wanna take the derivative of this thing and we wanna take the antiderivative of this thing. So be aware that with f of x here, if we write it in slightly more expanded form, um, our sum n equals zero to infinity, we get negative two x to the n over three to the n. In expanded form, this thing's gonna look like one minus two thirds x plus four ninths x squared plus, or I guess minus, excuse me, eight, eight over 27 x cubed. Then the next one, we're gonna get a plus 16 over 81 x to the fourth. And then we get a minus 32 over 243 x to the fifth. And this pattern would continue indefinitely. Uh, it would continue on and on and on. So if we want to take the derivative of this thing, well, first of all, we should actually mention what is what is the radius of convergence here because our derivative and integrals will only be defined on that interval of convergence, right? Um, going up to up to there. Now, with this one, we don't necessarily have to go through a full blown ratio test to determine the radius of convergence because honestly, we could rewrite this as I'm actually going to do it like this. Get this right here. We could actually notice that this thing is a. What happened to my sum? This is a geometric, it's a geometric series. Uh, and so it actually looks like negative two X over three to the N. And so as it's a geometric series, it'll be convergent so long as our ratio R is less than one. Well, that just means that the absolute value of negative two X over three is less than one, which of course tells us that two thirds times the absolute value of X is less than one. And multiplying both sides by three halves, we see that the absolute value of x needs to be less than three over two. So this is our this is our radius of convergence right here. The domains of our derivative and antiderivative here are going to be from negative three halves to positive three halves. So this is our our interval of convergence here. Which admitted, yeah, this this actually is the interval of convergence, but because we could plug in three halves and negative three halves and go from there, I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, in this situation because it turns out that the derivative and the antiderivative wouldn't be defined at those endpoints even if the function was. Uh, so let's look at the let's look at the derivative right so f prime of x. Uh, although it's nice to look at a general formula sometimes I like to just look at it term by term right if you take the derivative of one it's going to just die off then so we're going to get a negative two thirds that's it plus we're going to get eight ninths x minus 24 over 27 x squared plus we're going to get 64 over 81 x cubed and then finally we're going to get negative 160 over 243 x to the fourth uh dot 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 keep on going right there's this infinite domino effect falling down here but it's good to also write this as a general as a general power series the derivative of a power series itself will be a power series we have n equals uh, n equals one, excuse me, to infinity. And we're just gonna get n times, well, what do we get here? n times the negative two over three to the nth is unaffected by this process, but x will drop by power to the n minus one. So this does give us a general formula for the derivative, but we also could just look at it term by term by term if that's, if that's sufficient for us. Uh, we could also do the antiderivative. What's the integral of f of x dx? We'll come back to the general case in just a moment. You're going to get a C plus a sum of some things as n equals as n equals zero to infinity. Uh, but like I said, we'll come back to that in a second. If we do the antiderivative of the original function, uh, you're going to get C plus x minus. Uh, let's see, we're going to x will raise to x squared. You have to divide by two, so you get one third right there. Then for the next term, four ninths times x squared. That's gonna give you x cubed, and you get four over 27. And then for the next term, you're gonna get minus eight over 81, x to the fourth. 
I can squeeze one, one, one more into here, right? We're gonna get, uh, sorry, what did I get 81 from back up here? Uh, we need to take, when we raise to the x to the fourth, we have to divide by four. H divided by four is two, so we get two over 27. Uh, that's our coefficient there. Then the next one, we're gonna raise, take, taking the 16 over 81, x to the fourth. The x to the fourth will raise to the x to the fifth. So we have to divide by five. So we get 16 over five times 81, that's 405. And so this pattern will of course continue on. This is a positive value right there. And so we could do it term by term by term, but what's the general formula of this thing? Uh, the general formula that we're gonna get here is we have our, we have our negative two over three to the n. Um, X will be raised to the n plus one right there. And then you divide all of this by n plus one. Um, so you could do something like that. If you don't like that so much, you could rewrite it one more time. You could write it as a big fraction. We have negative two to the n, x to the n plus one. And then we have a three to the n times n plus one, something like that. This will give us a formula for antiderivative. And, and so these two, the derivative and the antiderivative are de defined on this interval of convergence right there. So that's all there is to calculating the derivative or antiderivative of a power series. It's fairly simple. It's really just do it like it was a big polynomial. But it turns out that observation is actually a powerful one that helps us, uh, well, in forthcoming lectures, we're gonna see how, why it's important to be able to calculate the derivative and antiderivative of a power series. Uh, and stay tuned for that in our next, the next lecture. Um, as always, I do wanna encourage anyone who's watching these videos, if you have any questions, please, please, please um, post your questions in the comments section here on YouTube. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Um, if you learned something in this video, please push the like button. If you want to see more cool videos about mathematics, uh, subscribe to get updates, or even still, you can put some comments down below and you know make some recommendations of things you'd like to learn about, and I'd be happy to make videos like that. Uh, other than that, I'll see you next time, everyone. Keep on calculating. Bye.